Good morning, good morning, good morning, church. If you can hear the sound of my voice, I hope that you join us in worship. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Y'all ready to rejoice? Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Sing a song and praise the Lord. Sing a song and praise the Lord. Sing a song and praise the Lord. Wave your hands. Wave your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Wave your hands and praise the Lord. Wave your hands. Wave your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Wave your hands and praise the Lord. Shout for joy and praise He's the Lord. He's been so good. Shout for joy and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Shout for joy and praise the Lord. Shout for joy and praise the Lord. Oh, so stomp your feet. Stomp your feet and praise the Lord. All right, everybody. Stomp your feet and praise the Lord. Stomp your feet. Stomp your feet and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Stomp your feet and praise the Clap Lord. Clap your hands. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, yes, hey. he's good. Clap your hands and praise the Clap Lord. Your hands. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands and praise the Let's Lord. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice and praise the Come Lord. On, everybody. Let's rejoice and praise the oh, Lord. Oh, let's rejoice. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Let's, Let's rejoice and Let's praise the Lord. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice and praise the oh, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hey. Yes, we do. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Let's rejoice and praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, that's his Savior. He's worthy to be. Praise him. Praise him. Can y'all just praise him right now? Praise him. He's a good God. Praise him. Jesus, that's his Savior. He's worthy to be. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Oh. 
a city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. Though the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. But the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Everybody say blessed. 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 I'm blessed. I'm. Everybody say blessed. 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 I'm blessed, I'm late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around, it's gonna work in your favor, oh yes it is, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna, and around, and around, and around, come on, late in the midnight hour, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around, it's gonna work in your favor. Oh, yes, it is. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around and 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 around. Yeah.
Amen. Thank you, Minister Covington. God bless you. Uh, seek the Lord while he yet may be found. Call upon him while he's near. I don't know. It's good, you know, and we're having come back to church. So we're missing the fellowship. But the reason we're here is to seek God. And somebody said, well, how do you seek God? The main way you seek him, well, you seek him in prayer and you seek him in praise. The Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. And when we call upon him, he hears. Anybody here got anything they need to tell God about? They need God's attention on? They need God's help with? We had a long discussion, not a long discussion, it really wasn't long enough this morning on, on how we ought to be acting. But we also talked about how we treat people who are not acting like we think they ought to be acting. How we bully and ridicule and put down and how some people are, have committed suicide because of how we treated them. And I just want to say that's never, that's never okay. The worst, and I'm not going to name any type of person, but the worst person that you see that you think is outside of God's grace and that is acting, what's the right word, ill. <laughs> it's not okay for you not to love them. And it's not okay for you to bully them and, to and put them down and make them feel like God doesn't love them because God does. And if you're having trouble with that, I want to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Can, can we stand as we seek God in prayer? Can we, can we put ourselves out and uh, as we're asking God to put himself out? And the next thing to do is to tune out yeah. what's around you, tune out what's happening and we can't really forget about it, but we can think about something else for a moment. Father God, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you for being God. And for being God by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and watching over us and for allowing the sun and uh, to shine upon us even when we were wrong and the rain to fall dear lord that we might survive we thank you father for blessing us and blessing us and blessing us some more we thank you for forgiving us when we've failed for honoring us, dear Lord, when we were dishonorable. For loving us, Lord, in spite of ourselves. And Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory yeah. right now. Oh, yes. We lift you up the, the best that we know how. You kept us, Lord, in a dangerous world. People around us haven't always loved us. We've not always acted, dear Lord, in our own best interests. You looked after us, Lord, when we would not look after ourselves. And Lord, before we say anything else, I, I just want to say thank you. Somebody said you've been better to me than I've been to me. And I thank you. You blessed me, dear Lord, when I wouldn't bless myself. 
And I thank you. And Father, I pray for those who are gathered around the Lord. I, I pray for those who are streaming in, who are listening in. And Lord, we seek you right now. We don't have all the answers. Lord God, we don't even have all the questions. Some of us are struggling with one thing and some of us another. Some of us, dear Lord, have had good days and some of us days not so good. But we seek you together right now. Knowing that we share a faith and we share a God and uh, we share a grace and a mercy that none of us are worthy of. Bless your people, we pray. Those that we can touch and those that we can't touch. But Lord, you can be what we can't be. Lord, you can do what we can't do. We pray, Father, for those who are struggling right now. Some have lost loved ones. Some are in situations that they, they don't know how to get out, get out of. And some, Father, got themselves there. But we pray for your grace and mercy. We pray for this church that it might know how to be a church. For this people, dear Lord, we might know how to be people that belong to you. Father, uh, we, we read in our Sunday school lesson that we didn't belong to ourselves. Our, our, our lives are not our own. Oh, yes. and Father, we yield to you. We don't understand it all. We don't have the answers, Father, to every question. But we trust you. We pray for those who have been put down. Lift them up, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who have been ridiculed. Give them peace and joy and hope. We pray for someone, dear Lord, who's about to give up, Lord, and we uh, encourage them, Lord, we pray. Bless your word today. That your word might be a blessing to your people. Lord, we're not calling all the names. Father, we remember those in Ukraine and those who are starving in Africa and who don't have enough water or clean water to drink. Those in this country, dear Lord, who are drinking lead. Show us what we, we can do to be a blessing. Father, we, we don't want to say, man, we, we don't want to say, uh, Lord, stay with us today and, and help us, Lord, to uh, ever be in prayer. As we remember stuff we need you for, Lord, we'll, we'll call it out. Most of all, bless this service and these people today. In Jesus' name we pray and for our sake. Amen. And thank God.
closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Here is Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. There are no words, there's nothing left, our soul sings to you. Oh. singing these words to Jesus right now. Oh, I'm so in love with you. You're beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, I fix my eyes. Posture. 
laying at your feet, oh Lord, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. God's been wrecking my soul. So forgive me if I shed some tears, but God is good. And he shows up in the darkest of nights. In the most unlikely situations, God is there and he has been and he has kept all of us. So I'm going to just continue in worship and in prayer. If you would join me in that just quickly lord we thank you lord we, we died to ourselves right now god we died to distractions god we died to our flesh we have a desire to be somewhere else god i pray that our desire begin to want to be in this moment lord to give you whatever worship we have if it's tears if it's a shout if it's a clap if it's a rock god we give it to you Coming to you with all of our brokenness. Coming to you in the little bit of faith that we may have or the bountifulness of it. God, we thank you. Jesus, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Fill us so nothing of this world will ever make us content. Lord, I died in myself at this time. Again, Continuously will die. And I pray be your spirit that go forth. And not this mere mortal. We lift you up at this time, Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. The last song we sang, one of the lyrics is, with just one look. Y'all, with just one look, God, God can look at your situation and transform it. With just one look, he ain't even got to move. With just peering into your situation, he can make it anew. He can captivate your soul and change you forever. That look might come 20 years down the road. It may come 20 minutes after the situation. And are you willing to persevere? Today, the heavy word I feel like the Lord has put on my heart is spiritual maturity in the depths of perseverance. Yeah. What does it look like to persevere? Mm. Yeah, I'm spitz. It's interesting. I had to go somewhere first because um, I appreciate Miss Lisa. We had, to, we had the opportunity to come to rehearsal yesterday and we decided to change up the songs. Um, and the first song is we got to rejoice because we get to rejoice, right? We have a choice, that's a choice. That's a choice. Then the second song is entitled Most Beautiful. Because even in a nightmare, God takes one look and he turns pivotal or pitiful patches into masterpieces. You know, he takes broken people and makes them heirs, kings and queens. He, with one look, he takes what some Depraved minds might find as ugly or unwanted, and he makes us beautiful. Amen. And it's hard for me not to be in love with Jesus. Because when he first looked upon my life at like the age of eight, I fell in love with something greater than me. Judge Jackson, 
shared a story when she was a student at Harvard. And she was walking down the sidewalk, not knowing if she should be there anymore, if she could stay, if she could stand, being one of few that looked like her in an area where people didn't know who she was the janitor. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a job of honor. Many people can't do it. But a woman that looked very similar to her was walking down the sidewalk, a stranger. And it's interesting because the word of God says, be weary who you entertain, because you could be entertaining angels. And in her case, I believe that woman to be an angel. And as they were passing by on the threshold of that sidewalk on Harvard lawn, she bent over and she said, persevere. And who knew at the ages of 18 to 20, whatever our old, old doc, uh, Judge Jackson was, that moment would prepare her for this one. But at that time, do I pronounce it Katanja? Is that how I say it? Brown Jackson didn't know that Judge Jackson would be telling that story years later. Perseverance. Perseverance. When God gave Abram the promise, he didn't know that he would be, it would be so far down the line as Abraham, that it would come into fruition. And even the preparation of his faith. He had the first give up Ishmael, do y'all remember this? In preparation for the test of giving up Isaac. In preparation. In preparation. Perseverance, you guys, is a steady practice of preparation for the purpose that God's called you to. I promise you there's scripture. We're going to get into it. But this is what God laid on my heart. Yes, yes, Katie. That's what, this is what God has laid on my heart this morning. Everyone that starts with you at this time will not end with you. And some of the ones we want to leave will be there until the end. And yet will you persevere. As believers, we came in covenant with Jesus, our Savior. And a covenant is a commitment to promise. Will we persevere to stay committed to God's promise? Which means aligning with God's purpose for his church in your individual lives and our collective. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Say amen if you believe it. Perseverance. So if you're sitting in the muck of depression right now, God still has a promise. Hmm. If you're battling with ADHD currently, or with a child, or with students, or with people that struggle with that, will you persevere? It's, it's interesting to hear your voice. Okay. If the cancer diagnosis came back, will you hold on to your faith? Through the 50 years of struggle you've had with your siblings, will you persevere, Ms. Howard? We're going to talk about how. Through years of being misunderstood, maybe even abandoned. Will you persevere? And we're going to pick this up in a second, but I just, I just need some of this to hit home. <sighs> through lovelessness, through numbness, through convictions, maybe misdemeanors or felonies, through character assassinations, through singleness, because some people see that as a sentence, <laughs> through marriage, now, Mr. Pitts, <laughs> be good. <laughs> be good. <laughs> ah, wake us up. Can't have a serious moment, Mr. Pitts, man. He <laughs> said, Lord Jesus, it's a sentence. Have mercy. Have mercy. I'm going to give you, um, 
a few paradigms. We're going to dive into the word, and then we're going to get three points. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> I get to listen to the word. I always try to listen to the word before I come in here to get filled, right? Because you, you can pour out of an empty cup, but what you pour out is going to probably affect the container, yeah. right? So we, we still pouring out people. So I didn't pour anything in. I was still going to pour out, and the pressure of that is probably going to affect me health-wise. Make sense? So I like to always pour in, uh, and Sunday school is a great way to do it. Um, so we are at 9.30, okay, in person, starting in April, another plug. But when I'm listening to what perseverance is, it's this duality of pain and purpose. Y'all with me? Of struggle and submission, right? Of being fire-tested and standing on faith. Perseverance is a wrestling match. Perseverance is earth and eternity, right? It's here and it's now. It's me being in this moment and knowing that there's a greater coming. Okay, well, let's get into the word. Let's see what God says about it. So we're going to be, and if you could stand for the reading of the word, we're going to be in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. It is on the screen. We're going to be emphasizing verse 3 today. And it reads, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And here we go. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because we love, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. Please remain standing, please. And I'd like to read verse three together. Just verse three. You guys ready? Let's get it. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Please turn to your neighbor and say, will you persevere? Will you persevere? Hallelujah. Yes you, yes, you may have a seat if you need to. Will you persevere? Will you persevere? Will we persevere? Because your perseverance allows us to persevere. You the church, we the church. (laughs) I just want to put that on you. So there is pressure to persevere. People's lives depend on your perseverance. Now, we're not going to get into how, we we are going to get to a little bit how we should persevere. But I want to give us three points today. The first point is perseverance takes understanding. It takes understanding, okay? Or is understanding. I should have changed that, but here we are. Perseverance is a level of understanding. It's understanding that I will go through pain. And that is actually necessary. It's actually necessary. Pastor, I said that it is necessary. (laughs) It's essential to our development as a human to go through tribulations. Now, the caveat is this. No one is telling you to willfully sin and throw yourself in a ditch that you see that has sharks at the bottom or whatever, animals calling at you. No one is telling you to do that. No one is saying, put put yourself in self-harm. Y'all with me? But please know that the tribulations, the situations that God allows, because he's allowing it. It does not mean that he said, oh, you know, he allows things. If we look at the story of Job, he mentions Job because of his faithfulness. And Satan was like, okay, Well, I too would be all this and all that if I didn't go through anything. So God allowed Satan to tempt him. I just want want us to be clear. So if you've been walking faithfully and doing all the right things and trouble hits, God did not forsake you. He did not forsake you. He is with you. But he has allowed certain things for you to be fire tested, purified, and character evolutionized. I just made a word. Okay. Because that leads us to our hope. And it made me think, it made me think. So some people will go through illnesses, chronic illnesses and different things like that. And I don't know who brought that on. I know that God allowed it clearly and or maybe, I, I, don't, I can't speak to all that. But what I do know is that it does matter how we persevere. And if my only thought is, well, when God makes me well, is that the only thought? Because God is using you today. He's using you today. No matter your situation, God's using you today. So the perseverance is the thought of, okay, I'm on this earth and I have elements that God can take away or not take away. Let's be clear. But my mind is on eternity. 
So if that means my child is off here, out here acting a fool for years, I'm going to love him now, pray him into eternity. I'm holding on to the thought that I know that God has called me to a promise. And thus I will do what is necessary at this time, which we're about to dive into, to make it to that promise. That's what perseverance is. It's not forsaking. It's not, Lord God, just, just move the mountain. He can move mountains, but you might usually have to go through them. Okay, well, let's, let, let, me get back to, let me get back to the word. So struggle and tribulation produces perseverance. We read that in Romans chapter 5, verses 3. So it's essential to our evolution um, character-wise, okay? And so as we know, um, it produces a character that's essential. So when we talk about character, I mean, we're talking about the things of Christ. We're talking about when he was very patient and um, the holiness and the righteousness that God's called us to. Those things are being produced in you in the middle of your tribulation. Excuse me, it could be. It could be because you could be running in circles, just begging for a healing, but not doing any other work to get there. That's not persevering. You guys, that's just surviving. <laughs> You're just surviving. I think sometimes I feel like, um, the way our world works in particularly in America, we're just keeping people alive. We're just, we're just keep, we're just passing, we're putting band-aids on open wounds. And that's what it is when we're just surviving. Well, God, I hope I pass the test, but I don't study, okay? You know what I'm saying? Or, oh God, you know, I, I really want this to change, but I'm not praying for my heart to change. I'm not praying for that person. I'm not putting faith to action. I need to stay with the word. One of the hardest things to persevere through is struggling relationships. Right now, right, right. Uh, raise your hand if you could think of a relationship you're struggling with at the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is where God has tore me up because I'm like, I don't get it, God. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I love them. You know, why can't things just be this? Well, because I, that's not my plan. That's not my plan. And as much as you want to will people into your plan, mine, being God's, supersedes all. And it's crazy because if it was my plan, nobody would have struggle. Nobody would have pain, nobody would have addiction. Everybody would be kind, cool, collective, funny. <laughs> Great cooks, you know, like I would do all these things. But what type of world would we live in, Ms. Howard? <laughs> if it was my plan, it's not your plan. That's what God keeps, ha he's been breaking me for like a month and a half. It's not your plan. Die to your plan. And I've had to die to my plan. I'm like, but God, you said make a plan. You said make a plan, but commit your ways. Let me read this to you. Psalms 37. We've heard this before, but it punched me in the gut this morning. Psalms 37, 3 through 7. I didn't send that to the media team, but, so God bless y'all. But it says, trust in the Lord and do good. That didn't, he didn't say the caveat after, and this is the caveat after it says, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. God said do good. He didn't say, um, I'm going to just keep reading it. I'm going to keep reading it. Then I'm gonna get back to it. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. The reason why I read this, he did not say that your sunshine and vindication will be right now. It could be an eternity. We may never see it on the face of this earth. Abraham did not see the full fruition of the promise. We see it. Abraham did not. Are you all with me? Okay. And so it, it, oftentimes I think, well, if I trust God and do good, it's going to happen now. If I trust God and do my chores, I get the money now. You know what I'm saying? Or if I trust God and I uh, stop talking to these people I shouldn't be talking to because it's distracting me from my purpose, then I'm going to meet my husband tomorrow. You know, if, if, I, if, I, if I trust God and I treat my grandchild with as much love as I can muster, then, then he will gravitate towards me and stop doing the things that he's doing. That second caveat that you added is your plan. Right? But what's God, if, I, if I just pray for my sister and I, and I do this and I do that, man, she'll be healed. And she'll come back to God. That's my plan. That doesn't mean it's God's. He said, trust me. Trust me. Commit your ways to me. And see, when we commit our ways to God, we're able to persevere. Yeah. 
We were able to sustain because we know it's not going to be by our works, but by his. And sometimes that leaves us with heavy hearts. In particular, in broken relationships, and this is what God has showed me. Struggling relationships will take understanding of the purpose of perseverance to continue in love. You got to understand that God has promised us eternity if you believe in him. Okay? And the only way the people in our lives are going to receive the love of God and that you're going to make it is if you understand what love is. So God had to bring it back to 1 Corinthians 13. We all know what it is. We quote it and we see it at weddings. But there were three points. So in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 5C, and 7, it says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love suffers long and is kind. Then say, love suffers long and snaps back. <laughs> it's difficult. Because who was you talking to? You know, like, <laughs> love suffers long and is kind. 13.5C, love is not provoked. I'm provoked because I believe I love you so deeply. I believe I do. And that's why when you make the infractions you make, I'm talking about close relationships. I'm talking about our families. I'm talking about our friends. I'm talking about our spouses. I'm talking about our exes. I'm talking about those. When those people step on your last nerve, push, yo, don't ever touch this button. I'm talking about those. And they know it because they're close to you. They know you. God's been wrecking me with this, y'all. Love is not provoked. And so I was like, well, God, what do you mean? Because emotionally I am provoked. But God is love. God is love. And he says, if you don't love your brother and sister, you're a liar. The truth ain't in you, basically. I think that's a quote that we have. And so to love them is to take on the character of God. And that might take 50 years of choosing not to react in your provocation, choosing to stand as long as it takes and be kind. That, don't mean, that doesn't mean be a fool. It doesn't mean not have boundaries. God says guard your heart. And you do that through the peace of God. So you, you do that in God. We're not guarding our heart by putting an ice cube chamber around it so people can't penetrate us. No, God is actually asking our heart to be wide open but allowing his peace that surpasses all understanding to guard it. So trust, it brings us back to trust. It's all gonna come together. The, the, First Corinthians 13, seven says that love bears all things, yeah. believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. I'm like, God, some things are endurable. <laughs> like, what? Like, my heart is wrenched, you know? And God says, but love endures. And, and, and he brought these examples to mind, which is going to bring me to the second point. Perseverance is a standard. And what he's asking you to persevere through right now, you may not see the promise. You may not see your siblings transform. You may not see your daughter healed. You may not see your daughter change. But what God is calling us to is faith and love, which, which enables perseverance. And so some of the examples I already brought up, Abraham, but other ones were Noah, right? We've been reading Hebrews at noon at our noon Bible study. And Noah had waited over 100 years for a flood after he built an ark. God gave him a promise, right? He waited over 100 years. Are y'all with me? Right. 100 years. 100 years. In a time where they hadn't seen rain. 100 years. I think of the woman with the 12 years with the issue of blood. Perseverance. Y'all, 12 years she's seeking. 12 years she's believing that if she just touches the hem of his garment. 12 years. It's important for us to bring this up. 
She had an issue for 12 years. Abraham waited 100 years for his son. There was 100-something years before the ark, d- mm-hmm. yes, floated in its purpose. Ruth got and then lost and then gleaned. Years. Years. And then didn't even see the promise. We see the promise. Ruth's obedience, her perseverance, allowed her to be in a lineage of King David all the way down to our Savior Jesus. Are y'all with me? You won't always see the promise, but you're called to persevere. Romans 5, 6, 6 says... For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mary was told when she was impregnated with Jesus. She, she was housing the Savior. At some point, she knew her son. She would lose her son, you all. For 33 years, she lived knowing that at some point, her son, her son, her son, our Savior, Jesus, had to walk his earth knowing the purpose of his life. 33 years. Are you guys with me? Every day, God perseveres through our sinful nature. Every day. Every single day, God perseveres through our sinful nature. Because even when we we did not choose him, he chose us. Will you choose the people in your life that God has placed there and love them in purpose? Will you? Because God does it every day. And it's our standard. It's the standard of our faith. The patriarchs of our faith did it. Not perfect, because we know some of their lives. But they stood in faith. (sighs) Last but not least, perseverance is a withstanding and a standing. Let me explain this. I'm going to go right back. Um, Oh, actually, I'm going to move into the last scripture I'm going to bring up. And it's in Ephesians 6, 13b through 14a. And we all should kind of know this because we're talking about the arm of God, right? Because we understand that this battle that we're in, where we're persevering through, we can see a human being with a struggle, but really it's, it's the spirit. We are in a spiritual battle. So oftentimes I get caught up looking at the person and what they're doing, the result of sin. But I'm not caught up in the fact that there's a spiritual battle happening within that person and me, within us both. Like we're dealing with spiritual battle, battles in principalities and strongholds that can also be generational. We go on this all the time. That is what we have to attack, grab a hold of, pray and relinquish, bind and loose in Jesus' name, lay hands on and pray, come together in community and confess, bring stuff to the light, because that's what's killing us. And that's what we see in results. And if we stay stuck on the result, we stay stuck in the flesh and we will lose this battle. Ephesians uh, 6, 13b, 14a says this, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We are withstanding the attacks of Satan. I'm going to say it clear. We got our flesh that has its desires, and we have a spiritual being fighting against God's purpose. Are y'all with me? Galatians, what was Galatians 5? It's spirit versus flesh every moment of every day. Like right here in the church, you are having a battle between your flesh and your spirit to fall asleep or stay awake. Right? Right? To, sh- to shout in Jesus' name or to focus on what you're having for dinner. We have an opportunity right now. <laughs> Spirit, right? Spirit versus flesh. Where are we at? How are you persevering in this moment and keeping God first for the promise? Because it's every single moment. It's not just when we can see the devastation. It's the moment by moment of our every single day, and God has called us to perseverance. And then here's the standing. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Perseverance takes community. It says for all the saints. It says pray and in supplication. And supplication is this. It's the action of asking or begging for something humbly or earnestly. So you want to persevere through something that you can't control? You supplicate to the Lord. Petition, beg him earnestly, and pray, and walk in faith, and choose love. It's not an or, it's an and. And that's how we stand. That's how we stand. 
<clears throat> and by putting on the full armor of God. So if you don't know what that is, please read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. I read it every day, twice a day. Yes, sir, because it's, it's necessary. It is necessary. And everything, and we've gone through it, and I'm not going to keep going. Um, but you need it. You need the truth. You need the truth, which is your belt, right? You need the breastplate of righteousness, which covers your heart. So you're believing those things which are true, which are honorable. What if when you saw that person walking in their sin, you began to be thankful for them and start praying for them and pray for God to change your heart towards them so you can love them better? Because most people are lacking something. They missed out on love when they were a child. They were abused, right? They were abandoned. And see, what we see is just that actualization of their trauma. Let's get to the real. We want to judge a reaction. No, get to my heart, and you'll change me forever. Okay? We also need to stand in fatigue and in long-term attacks. It made me think of Isaiah 40, 31. We will mount on wings like eagles. We shall. We shall. But you got to know who is bringing forth that eagle, and it's the Lord. You may not recognize it when it comes because you're focused on the wrong things. Perseverance takes vision. Keep your eyes on the prize. Last but not least, perseverance is one of the foundational elements of faith. I named some, some juggernauts in faith, right? Abraham, Ruth, Noah. We can go down the line. On so many people that have faith, but it took perseverance. It took perseverance for them to see the promise or not see the promise. But I'm going to encourage you in your life. This year, we are professing to understand spiritual commitment more and more. And perseverance is a part of that. Will you continue to stand in the muck in faith and in love and in truth and persevere with the people in your life and with yourself, holding on to the promise, holding on to the promise and not disregarding today because God is using you today. And if you are carrying something that you can no longer carry anymore, we have a savior that is a burden carrier. And he will take that, and he works all things together for the good of those who believe. Key word there. Believe, faith, cornerstone of your perseverance. Ooh, plastic. Are y'all with me? So the church, the doors are open. If you know the Lord for yourself but still need prayer, the altar is always open. This is not a time of judgment. This is a time of community. So feel free to come on up, and we will pray with you because we all are in need of prayer. If you heard the word today and you want to know more about this, this Jesus, this God that walks this earth perfectly, please, and you, and you want to invite him in as your Savior, now's the time to come on up and publicly declare, and we'll walk through those steps with you. If you would like to join the church, which is the body of Christ, not this building, feel free to come up as well. And if you're online in the chat, let us know. We got people checking out the chat right now. You are not forgotten. You are here. And we want you to come back in person in April.
Do y'all believe that? Hey. We're gonna make it. today and forevermore, Lord, in your gates, Lord, or on this earth. Holy Spirit, I pray that, that the word has gone out and that hearts receive it and that we go and we walk in perseverance, Lord. We choose joy. We stand, God, and we withstand. And we know that you are with us always. You are our power and our source. We love you, God. We ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Some way. Somehow, thank you. <laughs> We're gonna make it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Some way, somehow. Hey. We're gonna make it. Somehow. Somewhere. Some way, somehow. Yes, Miss Sheila. Hey, we're gonna make it with Jesus on our side. Here we go. With Jesus on our side, things will work out fine. I know somehow again. Okay. I know somehow. I know somehow. Okay. 